Good afternoon and welcome to the Pinell County Community College District Governing Board public hearing. To help reduce the spread of COVID, this meeting is being held virtually. I'd like to acknowledge those from Central Arizona College in attendance. I'm Dr. Dave Odiorn, Governing Board President. Evelyn Kasuga, Governing Board Vice President and Secretary. Gladys Christensen, Board Member. Dan Miller, Board Member. Jerry Walker, Board Member. Dr. Jackie Elliott, Central Arizona College President. Chris Wadka, Vice President of Business Affairs. Dr. Jenny Cardenas, Vice President of Student Services. Mary Kay Gilliland, Vice President of Academic Affairs. Brandy Bain, Vice President of Talent Development. And Mary Lou Hernandez, Executive Assistant to the President and Governing Board. And with that, we'll call this public hearing to order. Um, Mr. Wadka, would you please present the 2122 uh, budget for us? Thank you, sir, and good afternoon to you and good afternoon to all of the board members and the Madam President and Secretary and any, uh, any and all colleagues and guests that are present with us this afternoon. Uh, we are doing this now the second month in a row, if you recall, because we added the uh, ARP dollars, 12 million to our budget. So this is now a final budget uh, for fiscal year 22. I will briefly go over the three schedules that are included in your packet. The first one, which is a general summary of all the information. Some key highlights here are, is the general fund, which are also better known as our operating funds, are about a million dollars less than the previous fiscal year, or about 2.2% decrease. Our primary levy overall is a decrease of eight tenths of 1%. Uh, which is approximately four hundred and seventy-eight thousand uh, dollars in the total tax levy, being a reduction this year. The second page is a listing of all of our revenue sources for all of our funds, which include the current funds and also the planned funds, and these are broken down by the various revenue categories. And this now fully includes all of the federal dollars that we have received during the fiscal year. And later we have a presentation describing all three sources of our dollars, which are the CARES, CARISA, and ARP dollars. And the last page is a summarization of our expenditures. Uh, the expenditures are broken down by the expense categories that we must report on by. And you will notice that the total revenues equal the total expenditures, which are 82,234,846. So it is a balanced uh, budget that we are proposing for fiscal year 22. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Mr. Wodka? Hearing none. Um, Mary Lou, do we have any members of the public registered to speak uh, regarding the budget? No, we do not, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I would entertain a motion to adopt the 21-22 budget. So moved. Thank you. Second that motion. Did I hear a second? I second the motion. Thank you, Gladys. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of adopting the 21-22 budget say aye. Oh, no, no, we need a roll call. Sorry about that, Mary Lou. Yes. Okay. Evelyn Kasuga? Yes. Gladys Christensen? Yes. Dan Miller? Yes. Jerry Walker? Yes. Dr. Odiorn? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you all. Thank you, Mary Lou. Thank you, Chris. Uh, and that brings to a close the uh, special meeting on the budget. May I have a motion to adjourn, please? So I move that we adjourn. We, it's been moved and seconded. Those in favor say aye. 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 
And that concludes the public hearing. Uh, we will move immediately to the um, regular meeting. First item on the uh, on the agenda is to adopt the agenda. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? So made. Thank you, Jerry. In a second. 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 Those in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed? And the agenda is adopted. And now to the consideration of the consent agenda. All of these matters are part of the consent agenda and are to be approved by one motion. There'll be no specific discussion of these items. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda by any governing board member. Are there any items that need to be removed? Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Evelyn. Mary Lou, would you take the roll, please? Yes. Evelyn Kasuga? Aye. Gladys Christensen? Yes. Dan Miller? Yes. Jerry Walker? Aye. Dr. Odie Orn? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mary Lou. Our next item is with regard to the annual evaluation of the president and continuation of the her administrative contract matters related there too. Uh, we have discussed this in executive session. Uh, may I have a motion to adopt the president's evaluation as discussed in executive session? So made. Second. Thank you, Evelyn. Any discussion? Lou, could we have a roll call on this, please? Yes. Evelyn Kasuga? Yes. Gladys Christensen? Yes. Dan Miller? Yes. Jerry Walker? Aye. Dr. Odiorn? Yes. Motion approved unanimously. Thank you. Next item is the president's continuing contract, also discussed in executive session. And may I have a motion to offer the contract as discussed in our executive session earlier today? So made. Thank you, Jerry. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Mary Lou, a roll call, please. Yes. Evelyn Kasuga? Yes. Gladys Christensen? Yes. Dan Miller? Yes. Jerry Walker? Aye, aye. Dr. Odiorn? Yes. Motion approved unanimously. Thank you. And the final item under this uh, agenda item is the resolution to um, provide the president with a cash out equal to 80 hours of, of time. Uh, as was done for the rest of the employees of the college. May I have a motion to adopt that resolution, please? So moved. Thank you. And a second? Second. Thank you. Discussion? Hearing none, Mary Lou, roll call. Evelyn Kasuga? Yes. Gladys Christensen? Yes. Dan Miller? Yes. Jerry Walker? Aye, aye. Dr. Odiorn? Yes. Motion approved unanimously. Thank you. And you can take a rest now, Mary Lou. Uh, and now, uh, next you. item is the report from the college president. Dr. Elliott? Thank you, President Odiorn. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good afternoon, board members faculty, staff, and guests. I have a few updates from the district and legislative as well. Uh, first update is um, with the um, advances in public health related to the pandemic. We are adding more and more face-to-face -face classes to our fall schedule that students will be able to um, be on campus safely as we look at the numbers of cases that continue to climb and the number of individuals that continue to be vaccinated. 
Also, um, we are watching very closely the fires that are occurring and um, how they are impacting our Air Vipa campus. We have had to um, ask employees to work from home intermittently and close the campus intermittently, depending on what is happening with the wind and the direction of the fires. But right now, uh, everything is still, it, the campus is safe, but we are continuing to watch that as it evolves. As far as the legislative update, um, and interestingly enough, the legislature has come to an impasse on the budget. So every bill that the governor had on his desk, he vetoed in response to the legislature um, absconding their responsibilities to uh, pass the budget. So uh, we have no other updates other than this afternoon, Governor Ducey did issue an executive order that um, prohibits colleges and universities within the state from requiring vaccinations for um, students. Additionally, it prohibits us from requiring masks to be, be worn or tests. So that was an interesting development that occurred this afternoon. So I'm happy to entertain questions you may have about the update for uh, the legislature. <clears throat> questions for Dr. Elliott? Hearing none, uh, we'll move to the business affairs report. Mr. Vodka. Thank you, sir, and good afternoon once again to everyone. Two items for your information, the monthly budget report and then the awarded bids over $20,000. The first one being the monthly budget report is through the month of April, which is 10 twelfths of our fiscal year. So we have two months left before the end and close of this uh, fiscal year, June 30th of 21. Through April 2021, our district's operating expenditures are slightly over, a tick over 68% compared to about 68.2% last year. So just two tenths of 1% lower than a year ago at this point in time. I don't anticipate any drastic increases in any way, shape or form for the remaining two months of this fiscal year. The second item is the awarded bids. There are a total of 11 of them for your review and comment. I'd be happy to answer any questions on both of these reports. Questions for Mr. Wodka? Hearing none. Thank you, Mr. Wodka. Thank you, sir. Next item is a CARES Act report. Uh, Dr. Kudinas, Dr. Gilliland, and Mr. Watka. President Odiorn, uh, governing board members, Dr. Elliott, colleagues and guests. Um, I'm going to present the information today regarding the CARES dollars that we've received for the institution. Um, I will be presenting and then uh, Dr. Gilliland who oversaw the instructional portion of the money that we received and Chris, uh, who oversaw the institutional portion, will answer any questions particular to those two areas. Um, to start with, there were three different types of, of monies that the, the college was awarded. Um, the first was in March of 2020, and it was called uh, the CARES dollars. So it was Corona Aid Relief and Economic Security dollars. Um, the amount that was awarded to higher education as a whole was $13.9 billion. Um, a second award was then uh, released in December of 2020. Uh, it was called the CARESA, which is the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, um, in which higher ed was awarded $22.7 billion across the United States. Um, the third and presumably final um, pot of money that is being dispersed is uh, the American Rescue Plan, which was dispersed in March of 2021 in the amount of $39.6 billion. So that kind of gives a general overview of what higher education as a whole received uh, throughout, the, throughout the country. Next slide, please. So looking at the money that we received, uh, we kind of broke down the three different um, types of funding. And as you'll see, as, as we progress through this slide, and I won't go into too much detail, um, in the very beginning, the, the guidance that we were given was very specific as to how we could award students the funding. Um, we knew that 50% of the dollars that we received at minimum had to go directly into the hands of our students. Um, that it could be used for expenses related to the disruption of, of COVID-19 in general and uh, gave a specific listing of what those items could include. 
Uh, but we also were told at that time that our students had to be Title IV eligible to receive funds. As we went into Carissa, things started to open up uh, slightly. We were able to serve more students. Um, we did have to serve at least or use at least the same dollar amount, if not more, um, of the Carissa dollars to, to assist our students. Um, and we started to see that some of the, the expansion of who we could serve was opening up. Um, previously, we weren't permitted to serve any students who were in a fully online program, um, who had different restrictions. Um, as we went into the ARP, which is the most recent pot of money, um, it's really expanded to many, many more of our students. The final guideline indicates that all students who were enrolled at our institution, who were or are enrolled at our institution during the pandemic could receive aid. So it really opened things up. Um, we saw as things progressed that the regulations were much more lenient and helped us to provide students in a much more impactful way. Next slide, please. Um, the next was looking at our instructional funds and there were similar, um, there were only two different pots of money that were available for instructional funds. The first was um, expenses again related to COVID-19 and distance learning technology training um, and was fairly specific. Um, when we got the Carissa dollars, uh, we did find that it was the same type of regulation but also included the cost to um, reduce class sizes for social distancing, which was a welcomed, um, a welcomed addition to the regulation. So it allowed us to be able to use some of the money to ensure that our courses had social distancing um, and able to run them at a, a, a lower class size. And there was not additional instructional funds for uh, the ARP grouping of money. Um, this slide kind of shows the individual dollar amounts that were received. So as you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, the total dollar amount that was allocate, uh, allocated to CAC was $21,505,410. Um, and then it's broken down above based on what was allocated for students. And when I say for students, I mean that those are dollars that go directly into the student's pocket or to pay uh, remaining balances that, that they may have if they choose to use the dollars that way. The institutional was focused on many different areas, which also could include instructional items and, and student uh, resources as well. And then the instructional portion that I spoke about. So that just kind of shows the breakdown of how we received the dollars. Um, this was a really easy slide in that all of our student funds were 100% awarded to students or are in the process of being 100% awarded to students. Uh, we didn't have flexibility in that sense and that it, it does all have to go directly to our students and we found various ways of being able to provide that uh, to, to many different student groups. The next slide, and this is where, um, if there are any specific questions or Chris, if you'd like to give any further detail, this shows the breakdown of how we used our institutional funds. So the, the highest percentage of, of dollars that were spent, um, what actually number one and number two were very close to one another were technology and health and safety. So we ensured that our students had devices in their hands, that we were able to open up access uh, to students, to faculty and staff, to be able to use technology where they were, being that we were home uh, during that time period, as well as health and safety, ensuring that the campuses were safe. Uh, we still had public safety, our, our campus police departments and security officers that were on each campus protecting the campus and anyone who might uh, be on the campus as well. Um, ensuring that we had safety measures in place as we were preparing to return to campus as the year progressed um, for testing, uh, ensuring we had cleaning supplies and PPE and all of those different things. Um, the third was the COVID cash out, which was um, the ability for our faculty and staff members to be able to cash out um, various types of, of um, oh my goodness, I'm spacing the, their vacation or sick leave, so different types of leave that could be cashed out to be able to offer an option for our faculty and staff to have dollars in their pockets during the time when uh, we were home and, and many were facing struggles related to COVID-19 as well. Um, then academic support, um, which seems as though it's a low number, but as you'll go in and see the third slide, the third slide shows that these were all of the dollars spent in addition to that 19, 9% on instructional, um, on different instructional type uh, programs. So academic support was at 84% and then technology an additional 16% uh, of those dollars were spent towards technology as well. So um, if there are specific questions, we can certainly, can certainly answer those. No problem, next slide, please. And the last is just showing um, how we're moving forward. So we have many things that are in the works. Um, as you saw the last pot of money, the uh, ARP dollars 
were just funded within the last couple months. We're still in the process of determining how those funds will be uh, allocated. But these are some of the things that either are happening currently or will be happening in the future uh, with regard to student projects. So the CARES funds, which we've used in the past, um, which are auto awarded um, and based on financial need, which is one of the requirements set forth um, by the, the federal government, will continue to be auto awarded on a semester basis. Um, the CAC, CAC CARES relief and emergency funds are for students who have extenuating circumstances. There's a short application process where they're able to come forward and demonstrate an exceptional need that they have as a result of COVID-19 uh, where they can, can um, be provided additional funds. Our GED test vouchers, so we currently have um, enough money set aside for 400 individual GED tests to be taken by students. That's one barrier to our students is the cost of, of taking the GED test. Um, so that, that is in place now. Every student, either in the summer or the fall, is awarded a $100 book scholarship. So we know that books and supplies have also been a barrier to many of our students in being able to complete their courses. So this offers them that $100 discount. Uh, for the fall, we have implemented a three credit in-state, uh, three in-state credits valued at $258 to any one of our students. So if a student comes forward, the first three credits will be paid for out of the CARES dollars. Um, again, continuing with the veteran and military services <laughs> funds uh, based on, on uh, financial need for the, that student population. And then we are implementing um, erasing student debt from March of 2020 through the spring or May of 2021 in order to allow our students uh, to register for courses, to release their transcripts, to release their, their degrees if they have an outstanding balance on their account. And this is a very specific um, measure that the, the Department of Education recommended as something for schools to implement for just during that COVID, uh, uh, the time that we were in the pandemic being that so many of our students had so many external uh, things that were happening in their lives that potentially um, caused them to either drop out of, of school, uh, not successfully complete their courses, not have the ability to pay uh, for their tuition at that time. So it's a small, small period, but we feel will be extremely impactful for our students um, that had so many things that they were challenged with during the pandemic. So that was a lot of information. Um, any questions that I can answer or Chris or Mary Kay can answer for anyone? Questions regarding the CARES Act. Evelyn. Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, just an e easy question. Are students, do, do they know where the money came from when they get their scholarships and awarded? Just kind of what notification do they receive that this is a, a, a special deal? over right. the they, period of time. Yeah, they do. So we're sending out lots of marketing material, both uh, via email, um, social media, um, all different ways to students. But as they get their award, the award also indicates, uh, you know, where it came from, what it's to be used for. We do include that, you know, the money that's provided to them is to be used for educational expenses and what those educational expenses um, could potentially be, which do in, include housing and food and transportation and, <coughs> as well as education. Um, so that is provided, but an additional piece that we've added is if students haven't gotten aid, so we may talk about one type of aid, but then say, if you didn't get it, here's other aid that's available, or here's a way that you might find yourself eligible if you, um, you know, complete your FAFSA or, you know, different things like that. So we've provided lots of resources for students as well. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? The next item on our agenda is monitoring reports. Mr. Watka. Thank you, sir. Um, this is outcome number seven that has two points, satisfaction with facilities and also deferred maintenance. The first one, the satisfaction with facilities. Uh, a few years ago now, the board um, set a target, which is the 70% satisfaction mark. And now for the first time, even though this is a year old data now, uh, we have uh, surpassed that target amount. So um, that is great news. Um, we have a good satisfaction with facilities on campus. Obviously 70% is not something that uh, uh, we hope to stay at. We hope to obviously increase that, continue to increase that and, and raise our satisfaction with facilities um, 
as we move forward, which will be a very interesting year as we continue with a new normal for this fall. Obviously, our, set, our facilities weren't really used over the last 12 months, so we welcome back faculty, staff, and community uh, back to our facilities. So we hope to increase that percentage as time goes on. The next slide is the deferred maintenance budget. There, the board set a target of 25% a few years ago. We have stayed in around the 18% mark, which uh, is, is better than nothing, but it, it's not satisfactory in terms of where I'd like to be. Um, we do need to have for the institution a five-year deferred maintenance budget plan, which I am going to be working on. Um, in your packet, you'll see some of the recent improvements broken out by each of the campuses and also uh, planned improvements. I won't read through all of them, but some of the main ones that occurred this last year, and one of the biggest uh, had to do with the pandemic. Uh, wherever we did not have the automatic touchless fixtures for the restrooms, we have uh, incorporated them into the campuses and are still working on them in, in terms of some of the water fountains as, as we were on a backlog in terms of getting some of that equipment in. But we will have that completed here in the near future as far as uh, the touchless fixtures. One of the other things we are planning on for the SBC campus is something we presented to the board well over a year ago is uh, the demolition, remediation and demolition of some of our quads. Um, we are in the remediation stage currently. Demolition should be started here in the month of, of July and we will be completed with that project before the fall semester gets started. Um, and some of the planned improvements, the main ones there is really to work on our asphalts and concrete areas. Um, it just seems like yesterday that we opened up Maricopa and Santan <laughs> and renovated as SMC, but it, it's approaching eight to 10 years now, depending on which campus you talk about. And so there are some uh, crack ceiling, some asphalt issues that we need to address. And that's going to happen now in this current fiscal year and also over the next couple of fiscal years. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have on the facilities. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Wadka? Thanks, Chris. Thank you, sir. That concludes our agenda. Our next governing board meeting is scheduled for August 17th, 2021. And barring any unexpected developments, uh, we anticipate that will be on campus on Signal Peak. Uh, looking forward to seeing you all there for that. And thank you all for attending what uh, looks to be perhaps our last virtual meeting for a while at least. Enjoy the day, we are adjourned. <laughs>